See, when this thing kicks on and does everything it's supposed to right off the bat, it looks really good. Full So, agenda wise, I guess we're continuing the discussion on uh, administrator creation of a county administrator and ultimately. Conversion to our commissioners. Um, I looked at Gillum County's because they're in the process of doing this as we speak, and they had some information on their web page, um, basically kind of a path forward uh, job description or an announcement um, for a county administrator. Pretty basic, really, um, the announcement itself. But even in Gillum County, their pay range is 117000 to 140000 Minimum qualification, bachelor's degree, and five years of professional, progressively responsible experience in an administrative, managerial, and supervisory capacity in the public sector. Does it list like even a short paragraph of as to what their main role is? Um, the that one that uh, Chris Robinson sent us. No, I couldn't build this off myself. From he sent an email about Gillum because I thought that's where I read that. Is Gillum going to put it to a vote, or are they just going to make it happen at the county court level? Well, as far as the, um, I don't know. Um, We kind of have a process outlined here in a draft document. He said it just in 24. But that um, yes, it does look like a vote. What did this move have? County court utilized this um, summary. December 20, during the December 20th meeting, several community members suggested the court, the county court, look at hiring a full time county administrator. Purpose of today's decision this document is dated January 3rd. Um, purpose of today's discussion is to explore the idea further. The county court decides to move forward and wants to interview applicants for the position in an executive session. 
It must follow a specific procedure outlined in. I don't know if they can do interviews during the executive session, but county court utilized this process when hiring the previous chief of staff position. The agenda item aligns with goal one, strategy one, and goal three, strategy one, whichever word those refer to. Suggested motion language, I move to adopt the Gillen County Administrator hiring procedures. So that's the procedures for hiring. Yeah, that's what I have pulled up here. Please list support documents. It's on the, <clears throat> the email, it does have links to those documents. The hiring procedure, position profile, position description, and the application. So there's their process and you know it's got stuff within, but step one to find position, develop profile. Hello. Hi. Step two, prepare prepare advertisement and review the salary range. Step three, application submission. Step four, interviews. So I mean it's really pretty standard as far as their, their selection process. Another document. What was on there is uh, continuation of discussion. Now, this one, this one goes uh, refers to the conversion to board of commissioners. Does anyone know if our state? Representative or senator or anyone is got it on their um, list of things to do to Mark try to get those. Yeah. Mark. There's several different ways to achieve it. Uh, I understand they might go if there's a, a bill in the rules committee that it could be attached to, or just in order to remove the probate from the counties that are dictated in statute to conduct probate. Uh, if he proposed that they would remove that one line of the statute that would then allow those counties that are under that to no longer be under that. And so then it could be the county's choice whether they remain under it versus statutorily be beholden to do it. Okay. So 203 ORS 203. I that there's a that path for the moment of which bill that would be okay. attached. Perfect. Just Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad it can be something that. Yeah, so simple. it is literally one line that they would have to say that we are removing that one line out of the next um, The county court, well, the summary ORS 203.302, the very first line, the county court of any county which has not adopted a county charter and in which the county judge has no judicial function may order the office of county judge abolished and create a third county commissioner. So the key thing there is has no judicial function, which then falls to ORS 1, chapter 111. And there are um, One eleven point zero five five transfer of probate jurisdiction, and in that in that section, it specific speak, specifically speaks to Gillum, Grant, Harney, Malheur, Sherman, and Wheeler counties as having um, probate jurisdiction, and then one eleven point zero seven five probate juris, jurisdiction vested, and again it mentions Gillum, Grant, Harney, Malheur, Sherman, and Wheeler, so they have to amend both of those sections. Um, so one's a transfer and one goes investing. Um, all probate jurisdictions, authority, powers, functions, and duties of the county court, the judges thereof are transferred to the circuit courts and the judges thereof in all counties except. Yeah, okay. So they'll they would have to amend that no, one, one and point zero seven five. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think, you know, whether whether we or any other county decides to um, convert from a county court to a board of commissioners, 
we should be able to have that ability to make that decision and do that without being hindered by a by a statute. Right. So so whether it happens or not, I, I would I would uh, prefer to see the county level yeah. make those decisions. Yeah. You know. And I believe Gillum County um, is in direct communication with their representatives to report rule changes or statute changes. Um. I spoke with Malheur County Judge, and I spoke with Commissioner Schellenberger from Lake County recently, and just telling you how they do it. Uh, Lake County is a board of commissioners. They all three are equal in you know uh, their FTE and and how they do things. They every year uh, rotate by by election. Um, which one will be the chair that year? Uh, they it could be. He said so far they just always keep rotating it. But it, I mean they could elect the same person to do it for two years in a row, or you know if they wanted to. They have an administrative assistant that is dedicated to the county to the board of commissioners, and that person does you know, agendas, minutes, and sets up stuff like that, but does not do administration of personnel matters or anything like that they have an hr person and that person does everything on hr and they rarely get any of that stuff brought to them and they are not intimately involved in the hiring of county employees in general what county was that lake, lake. lake. yeah and they actually have um three offices right beside you know the three of them have offices in their courthouse boom 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 you know commissioner Rowe, so to speak um but uh rogues rogues gallery um galley <laughs> no anyway um yeah they seem to the hr personnel matter stuff didn't seem to be something that is shared by them or by any one of them as a big responsibility. The way our county judge serves as an administrator and it just all seems to flow up there. So just that's, I said, hello, is that go okay? Oh yeah, fine, okay. Then um, now here county, they also don't have an administrator. They have, um, I think longtime employees who've been doing the HR stuff and, um, some of the financial stuff. Oh, in Lake County, the treasurer is also the budget officer. And I said, is your treasurer elect an elected office? He, they said, yes. Some places it's not. So uh, those were just a couple more counties I've spoken with. I haven't even talked to Grant County. Has any of you? I mean, a long time ago, but. I have not recently had that because yeah, I know at one point they were considering doing the same, but I really, yeah. Sam was really still around since the last time I discussed it with him. There was something else Barry had shared with me. I'm trying to find that email from him. Well, I think when when you take, one other thing that they do different. When you take the day to day and overall personnel management functions, HR functions, and they're done by staff, and it goes well because policies are in place that mostly take care of those processes being done pretty well. Um, then those particular counties, they're like, well, we've never had to, you know, our judge, or if I'm the judge, I never had to do that stuff in that kind of great detail. They didn't, you know. So Harney County's, we're all, you've seen one county, you've seen one county, but Harney County judge has done those and and the budget officer in ways that other counties didn't and <laughs> that's all yeah the 
also have a uh, link has like a budget manager or a business manager position, but it's actually a person that uh, had been residing in Lake County and is no longer residing in Lake County. Oh, well, that's what he so said. In that position, and and you know does a lot of it remote ends around. That's right. It, you know, comes back to now and them. handle some of the business. Um, he, he said they're quote budget officer, business manager. Now resides in Idaho and still does it remotely, and it's starting to be a little bit of an issue. But you know, Jay, who was it? I didn't ask it the name. Seems like that needs to be Jay, known. because I called him and talked to him last week on another on another topic, and I believe basically their business manager is. Another title for an administrator. That's what I, I felt that they were similar. Oh. What what some of their duties were from the description, which I am not finding in my email at the moment. Um it was slightly different than like the Gillum County Administrator deal, but it was had a lot of similarities too. So so, so Morrow County, they did switch in 2017. They went from a county court to a board of commissioners. I spoke to a former commissioner who was one of the two that got recalled. Um, and um, she said that just frankly, you know, the administrator was really tight with one of the three of them and basically just did a lot more than she felt he should, but wasn't even always you know, included to, to know what he was doing. That he was the administrator was signing contracts without public input or meetings on things like one of their sore topics that was controversial was their um, ambulance service coverage up there. That became quite um, uh, a topic of public division and, and concern. And uh, the administrator just went on and, and just signed stuff and did stuff, kind of just ran with it. And, you know, she was saying, how can this be? How can you not have informed the public, let the public provide input and follow the Oregon minimum standards for that kind of thing? And so she said, she said, I'm not saying it out of bitterness. I'm just saying, you know, if you have an administrator and if they have a lot of power, either because the electeds aren't even sure, you know, and especially if they're newly elected and the administrator's been there a while, they don't even know they should be seeing all these contracts that you want us to get a handle on, right? They aren't even aware that some of the public processes and transparency in, in the decision making gets um, removed. And that's her concern. She said, I would just, if I were you guys, I would just make sure you talk long and hard about it and make sure that's not likely to happen. And she said, if you have an administrator who likes one or two out of the three and plays games, you know, in what they tell who, that's a mess. And of course, I would like to say if we have an administrator that they would, um, if it's if it's not sensitive executive session stuff, you know, they can, they can be on the agenda at least once a month on county court and just have a 10 minute thing where they, they go, okay, so, you know, so the following contracts that you all reviewed, they have, they have gone out and we, you know, just kind of keep everybody what's going on and, and not hiding anything else that's going on. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of it. If we go in with your eyes wide open and we all, she said what happens is if you, over time, you just have to be sure. It's it's one thing if the original county court or board of commissioners lines it out a certain way, but over time they come and go. And um, and again, you might have an amazing administrator that it, that is totally, you know, sensitive to to public input, et cetera, but you might not because they're just doing what they think they're supposed to do, and that's more for the electeds to handle, you know. So, <laughs> Malheur County said, "Well, I hate to see you guys do that because once you become board commissioners, I won't see you anymore because you won't get reelected because there'll there'll be a revolving door." And I said, "Really?" And he said, "I've seen it happen." <laughs> So, <laughs> well, I, I like to pass it on, you know, uh, as, you know, if it might be an exaggeration a little bit, but on the other hand, in his view, um, the trust of the people 
or the connection that people feel toward their, their electeds can be reduced also. I mean, we, we want, we want the, I want the processes, the administrative processes to run the way they should. They shouldn't, it shouldn't be that hard once you got it in order and people are all following the policies. You just have the occasional exception and situation to look at. Hiring processes should be mostly the same, except for certain very sensitive positions, you know? Oh, okay. Job descriptions reviewed. Yes, it's accurate. Okay, we're going to post it for this long. We'll see other candidates, screen it, and then however they we hire. It shouldn't be so much of a drama. Well, one thing with Member County not having them, they also have a legal counsel at every meeting sitting with them, advising them throughout. Oh, interesting. They have a full time legal counsel in there. So the okay. legal counsel basically acts in an administrative duty. I see. In the long she I didn't even know that. I asked her, and I said, So, with, you know, your <clears throat> media being so good at scrutiny over there, how do you handle some of that? <laughs> so, that's how they handle it. Is, yeah. Even so we will cancel and they give him a nod and then he decides what's there. And I, you know, I think that part of that is we're trying to in this discussion decide what qualities and qualifications a person should have as a county administrator because if they have the right qualifications and experience, hopefully they would be able to navigate some of that without, you know, yes, they need to concur with legal, but they should have a skill set coming into it where they can navigate that without everything turning into a situation like now here i i agree um and i um i think the way again as commissioner doro mentioned though too having having policy in place that allows that person to do their job without um, having to run to the governing body all the time for decisions is, is essential. Um, I, I also believe that uh, the county, the governing body has to be careful about becoming um, disconnected from what's going on within their county administration. Uh, and um, kind of, you see Lindsay's online, so kind of like actually what the fair board does every starts off with the fair manager's update and and to keep that kind of um, information flow that that uh, an administrator would be expected to come before the county board yeah. commissioners uh, um, and give that update every two weeks um, yeah. to keep to keep that communication flow. Um, I I. Uh, I would have other concerns about whoever it is that's the chair, that that person being uh, should be a full time person, that the chair should be full time. I I'm not too sure about having part time, full part time, half time board of commissioners, um, and and having full time staff. Who's who's going to supervise the full time staff? Are we then turning that over to the administrator that that person becomes the the basic focal point or 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 county head, um, head manager, whatever, um, if, if three commissioners are only here half the time. So um, I would have concern about that myself. Um, I um, think to speak to the half time part, um, I've had a lot of uh, folks that I've talked to say that they recommend, you know, some counties call it half time or some call it, you know, different MP, but really, you're you're an elected official in that role and that capacity and you have a job to do. And so attaching an FTE to an elected official is kind of um, a nuance of sorts because you know very none of us keep track of well did I work 20 hours this week? Uh, you know, and I don't I don't stop when I get to 20 hours because I'm a half time position. And so I think, you know, somewhat uh, the advice that I've I've had from others is remove that idea, remove the fact that we're calling it a, an FTE position. You're elected to do a job, go do the job as board commissioners, do the job as the chair, do the job as the other 
members of the governing body, but it's, you know, we've had a lot of FTD discussions since I came on, and I, I you know, the form girl that I'm in it, I, I really feel that trying to throw FTE into elected officials dialogue is, is kind of counterproductive because we don't keep track of checking this time box of how much we did and according to a time. <laughs> well, at Lake County, uh, Commissioner Schollenberger said, he said, we are expected to be in our courthouse five days a week. We are, all three of us are expected. That is the expectation here. I said, that is not the expectation. We need to be where we need to be. And we are. And I said, but with technology, it can be done different ways. And um, we all have a lot of committee assignments and, and areas that we're involved in. And, you know, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm, I can't even imagine a uh, county judge, but as the years have gone by and I've still been on the court, you know, I feel like it's 24 seven, even, you know what I mean? It, because, you know, we get, because things happen and we, we are in the loop or have to be in the loop for things, the unexpected things that happen and whatever. So I understand what you're saying. I think I understand what you're saying about maybe quit calling it any kind of FTE, but people do who may want to run for office as a commissioner, um, you know, the expectation of, you know, I know some people will run if they assume it's part-time, I'll just call it part-time, uh, but if it were considered full-time, they wouldn't because they also have a ranch or they also do this and they they, they feel they could balance it if it's part-time. I think it boils down to expectation. What's expectation of the position, whether you call it an FTE or or what? What is the expectation? Much like Lake County is the expectation that you'll be in the office five days a week, whatever whatever that's considered, or whether you'll be in the office five days a week, eight hours a day, whatever the expectation is, and that however you define that, whether it's through FTE or some other form, um, I think that could become an issue down the road that if. Um, if there's no expectation there I identified, then the person in the seat can say, "Well, there's nothing that says I have to be here." I mean, we're all we're all accountable to the to the people of Harney County through election, but but that's four years. How does that person interpret it? How does the individual in that seat at the time interpret it? I remember Harney County person saying to me about six months into me being a commissioner and. Mark Owens was commissioner then as well. And he said, he said, oh, I think you guys are doing a good job. I, I'm glad to see that the commissioners just aren't eye candy that show up twice, twice a month for a county court meeting. And I said, excuse me? I said, that's just the tip of what we do. Yeah, and I I definitely would acknowledge that while I'm I'm here Monday through Friday, eight hours a day. I do recognize the hours that you both put in, the meetings that you attend and everything else. So I I, I recognize that, that it's not just two times a, a month. Um, so um, I, I'm not, and I've said it before, but I'll, you know, I'll reiterate, I'm not opposed to the creation of an administrator. Um, I don't personally think we're ready for it. I don't think we financially are ready for it. Um, I think we need to have a lot of foundation in place before before we create the position. And um, for the commissioners, I don't really see a difference myself between the county court or a board of commissioners. Um, just to what the statute says, if we switch tomorrow from a, from a county court to a board of commissioners, I maintain as the chair throughout the remainder of my term. That's statutory, and um, and it would it's just a title change, really, for that part of it. The um, the probate portion of it obviously would be would be shifted elsewhere. But other than that, for the next five years, anyway, it, it's the same thing. So I don't have a, I don't have a I don't have concern there or a, or a. Yeah, I, it's been a long time. Well, I, me. I, it has. I like 
the thought that there would be three of us, not just two and a little bit you, to work on the areas of concern is what we call it. There, there, there's stuff that'll be in our strategic planning that'll be the stuff that's hitting us expected and unexpected, you know, at any given time. And um, there's just a lot of work to be done, you know, and when a person's doing a very full job of administrating the county, they don't have time for those other things. I, I think of it in military, chair, military terms as we, we're all three action officers, so to speak, coordinating, but we can all take pieces and get more done. Yeah. I, I agree. So that's just, you know, we're all, we're all here to, to say where I think we're at or where, where we think we're at. That's just, that's my, my view. But as far as finding the money for it, I mean, that would be a challenge the same next year as this year, or maybe even more of a challenge depending on Burns Urban Renewal Agency reductions, et cetera, that, that could happen. Um, are you thinking that it would be easier to find the funding later rather than this coming year? Well, I, in some respects, yes. Um, I think budgeting for it is going to take a lot more of a concerted effort than just the three or four months of the budget cycle, but actual planning ahead a, a year out for um, for how we're going to shift roles and responsibilities possibly. Uh, it could potentially be um, the... Uh, um, deletion of some positions. It could be cutting back uh, operating costs in some aspects. Um, you know, the just the sheriff's office as as one department. Last week or earlier this week, as is Monday, uh, nine one one committee meeting. They've been in the process of looking at a new uh, computer aided dispatch uh, system. 20 thousand dollars, twenty one thousand the first year, twenty nine thousand the third, fourth, and second, third, fourth, and fifth year. That is an additional hit on the general fund. So um, that doesn't come out of the nine one one tax. No, they they use um, part of it could, and actually when um, I assume that's. What's the purpose of the tax is to help maintain the system? I, I would like to see that fund fund everything to include the capital expenses like that, and then us live within our means yeah. of that. The, the total amount of the of the switch over over five years is seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and front of me, but but basically, and that amount is split between the five users, potentially the six users uh, with Burns Tribal. So twenty to twenty five thousand dollars a year over five year period. Um, so I'm just I'm just pointing that out as far as uh, prioritization of of resources, public safety being being pretty high on the list. Um, other other departments. I mean, you know, we want to take care of our people the best we can in salary. We uh, we definitely want to rebuild our our reserve and continue to to do that on uh, you know whatever ability that is. I think this year, actually, as I mentioned in the budget meeting last week, I'm gonna st I'm gonna start by plugging in two hundred thousand dollars in the uh, in the transfer to the reserve and then budget from there up. Because um, if if we budget the other direction, it ends up just being whatever's left over is what gets transferred and it. If we're dipping into it too much, that could be a hundred thousand one year. That could be hundred fifty thousand one year, and and that's not going to get us to our goal if we don't make that a priority. And generally speaking, to the best, I mean, we're not we're still going to do some transfers among funds, but and we'll have to see with this measure one ten. But for instance, corrections corrections is important, but again, if those caseloads aren't going to go up again, then we're we're kind of heavy for what we absolutely need to do that job. 
nothing personal against any of the excellent people that work there, but I'm just saying we don't, you know, decisions have to be made based on the missions of each department and and then the overall goals of our finances for the good of the county. So I that's my concerns. Budgetary and, and, and procedural but, policy in place. However, with um if you continue to do the administration, when's their time to do the policy, write the policies? And you know, if you, you bring someone on to do start doing the administration and then frees you up to lead us in in developing policy. I mean, I'm just, you know, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just saying as long as you've got that full plate on in front of you, how are we gonna get there? Well, and it, and just like establishing a priority for the reserve or priorities for other spending within the general fund, if we decide, and I don't know, maybe we maybe we start off with a position that's not an administrator position, but a lesser position that doesn't cost us as much, but it but can work on that policy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and take and take some of the the heat of the stuff that I do on a daily basis, or not heat some of the pressure of, of uh, some of that stuff that I do on a daily basis to help to help free up to be able to look at other projects outside of that administrative role, and then work towards developing that position later on. I guess maybe into the full blown administrator, just phase it in. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing an option out there. That might help us find uh, a way to uh, afford to move in that direction. So, as you were looking at the potential healthcare services administrative role, where were you going to take those funds from to to fund that position fully? So, the RHC, the revenue that comes in from the health clinic. Our pure revenue. We could spend that anywhere we wanted to. It's not my goal to do that. It's not my intent to do that. Um, my intent would be that, first off, the public health director position would also be part of that position. So we're not filling both of those positions, we're filling one. The, the public health director position, I think, is at a ballpark $70,000 a year. Um, and then you know, depending on what this administrator position would be, is probably going to be close to a hundred thousand a year position as well. You're talking about health administrator, health health service administrator, yeah. slash public health, slash director. public health director. Yeah. So, and we'll be having a conversation on that in March. 4th. Yeah. So, um, I think also that there could be between joining the joining all of our health services uh, <laughs> operations together. That there could be a lot of, of uh, efficiencies found, uh, duplications that are being that are being done right now that could be streamlined and save money in both in both labor and in uh, operational costs. Um, Let me just chime in there. I, to me, that's what I see the role of the county administrator. Uh, taking on instead of having to hire this separate person to just oversee these three current departments, if we actually had a full time county administrator instead of having to have a separate administrator over our health care, to me, uh, some of that revenue from the RHC could be contributed to pay for our county administrator because they would also be administrating and supervising those departments as well as any county departments. And so in order to coordinate between those three entities, I don't know why that couldn't occur with a county administrator being able to devote their time just to administrating and coming in with those skills and qualifications that give us confidence in that individual to perform those duties. And I, I feel like we're potentially creating redundancy in, in hiring someone over those three departments and then also wanting a county administrator 
that would be supervised at other departments. So then you'd have this additional layer of administration between the administrator instead of just allowing the administrator to fulfill that administrative role. Yes, they would need to make sure to have an eye towards all healthcare services, make sure that you guys are meeting monthly and you know working well together and working on efficiencies. But uh, I think some of that revenue would go towards our funding problem of this position that we're proposing and make sure that they are going to serve that more as well without creating another layer of redundancy between the department heads and the county administrator. And one of the things when we get to that conversation on another day is that the governing body, you know, has the responsibility for the public health authority, mental health authority, even though we're not medical people. That doesn't mean we don't and sh that we can't and shouldn't do that. We very much should on behalf of our people because when stuff can come down at us and our people have strong feelings about it as do we, we can, from a policy standpoint for our county, sometimes we can, we can represent. We always have the advice of our medical people. And I would like I would like that also to be part of we see them on a regular basis for just some check marks, you know, in a, a county court, it can be, it, or a work session, you know, and they just have the, have the three agent, the health agencies, and, and we go, okay, each of you, how's it going? How's your staffing going? How's your caseload going? Any policy concerns? Any pressures you're feeling? You know, we pretty soon we feel like we know some of what they're dealing with. I mean, I, I know we have tons of meetings, but you know, these can be expectations over time to where the governing body is still in touch with things, directly face to face with these professionals who, you know, are obligated to keep us informed. Well, as as the administrator role that I play now and the um, being over the health department, home health hospice, uh, RHC. I'm not a healthcare professional. I get I get a hundred emails a week from OHA um, on vaccines and and communicable diseases and and other initiatives that that needs a dedicated person to to deal with that. Um, well, wouldn't that be public health director for that kind of stuff? Since that's public health stuff, they are getting the same emails you are. They give you the summary if you want it weekly and they go are we going to to take the public health director and place them over home health and hospice or is it going to stay a separate department i don't know i need to hear you more your current designation is a, i like to keep the public health separate. administrator uh, that you're fulfilling with the state currently to me that would be uh behooven to place that duty on the public health director where we already have that in the budget for that position, so you wouldn't have to be creating another position. And then, like I said, in, in hiring a county administrator that is only dealing with administrative duties and no other duties, I mean, they would. I mean, you know, you glance at them for, for information, but they they're getting all those emails plus some, and they keep you or whoever you know, or all of us, whatever, informed on the major things and if they need help or a decision on something. But you don't have to be a medical person and still, if your public health director is a director, they're gonna know, they're gonna know this stuff. They're gonna have peers, they're gonna be on top of it. They're gonna be able to explain it to us in layman's terms that we get. Well, I have time and capacity to attend with many, many- I don't think they should be them. over the RHC or home health hospice is my opinion at the moment. You know, again, you all could say something and change my mind right away. Well, the previous because health director was over RHC. Whatever. I, I, I don't think that's correct. RHC is great, but they are primary care and they are a different animal. And when you talk about efficiencies, you're hoping, we'll have, okay, let them all tell us what that can be. But the public health stuff is, is different. And um, that director, has plenty to do. They just don't need a staff of millions to do it, but they, they need to be focused, keep us informed, 
and let us know when things are ramping up and, and we need to put extra help to them when, when there's a public health crisis or et cetera. But for the most part, it's quite a bit of outreach. It's quite a bit of program management. You know, it, it, it's, and, and they should keep the governing body informed. Um, we're not going to micromanage it. Once we feel comfortable that we kind of know what's going on, maybe even get these emails and feel like it was all on you to no, answer them. I have because, because uh, the existing staff or the current staff has been comp getting compensated for the past year extremely well to do those duties in addition to their duties. Um, and that's why I haven't, um, you know, we've talked about it a little bit. It's not something, it's not, it's not a good uh, uh, model for a long-term, um, to continue long-term in that role. But, um, but I, I mean, I've, I've asked them, I've told them, I said, look, you guys, I'm sure you get most of these emails and they have assured me that they do, that, um, that I'm like, well, I'm going to rely on you then to, to make sure that you're acting where you need to act. But, uh, and they have. Um, but I, again, it's not a model that is sustainable. Um, those roles and responsibilities need to be turned back over to either a public health director or a business administrator. One or the other. And, and just in the last 10 years, health, uh, Oregon Health Authority has morphed into this giant bureaucracy of stuff and, and people at the state level and the regional level and all kinds of additional layers of things that are what state government does. So I, I understand why it might seem pretty overwhelming, but when you get back to brass tacks, it shouldn't be. Not for public health. Well, not for public health in and of itself in that one entity, but but they're not the only entity over there. Really. Yeah, but why would they have the ability to oversee those other ones if they're doing their job on public health? You know, I mean, Home Health Hospice, RHC, they each have a director, right? Or should, or well, whatever. RHC, RHC have it. a manager. Whatever, manager, whatever. And an office man, basically a clinic manager. Which serves just like kind of our other department heads. Mm -hmm. That's the way we just call it. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, public health has, is a bigger job than it used to be. It's highly administrative. Uh, that's the part that's grown. And then when COVID happened and they finally had to try to um, handle a communicable disease, you know, they learned a lot of lessons and, and, uh, and did a lot of things that were new. But, um, I mean, we can let it be a runaway train if we want to, but I don't think we should. I don't think we need to. We have good people in those areas. Then let's see if we need where that overall administration might need to, to be. I mean, I, I'm not privy to what, what comes before you from, from those departments and what you're asked to weigh in on. Because we haven't shared anything with us, so, um, but I think, you know, with their no, professional that's... advice, if it's something we're supposed to make a decision on and we're briefed thoroughly, we'll do it. They were I think getting off topic, I think, for county court or uh, board of commissioners and administrator, we have this other work session planned for next, for whatever it is, next month um, to address that topic. But uh, how we got there, though, was I, I do feel like that there's an opportunity instead of creating another administrative layer between us and those department heads to hire that county administrator to really fulfill the role that we're expecting out of this other position, which would then be, you know, one less additional, just go back to our, uh, you know, even when we had the public health director, we really found out that it should have been called the public health administrator because they were supposed to serve in that administrative capacity that you've been currently tagged to serve in, when really it should have been that person doing that. It was something that happened during the draft era that should have taken place then, I feel, and we need to shift it back to where it was before the judge took that on. 
And that would allow that person to serve in an administrative capacity with the state and to fulfill that role. And if the person was employed, but then they're also an employee in that specific public health administrative piece, taking care of the public health modernization, the funds that are available with it, you know, and, and being the department head for public health. It, it got worked differently here in Harney County, and I agree with what you just said. Um, almost no county judges were functioning with that hat. It, it's, an, it, it's a profession within the healthcare that somebody who needs to be wearing that hat has familiarity with. That's why I don't, I don't think that the a county administrator should fill that role. Yeah. Because, because they over there in that industry, those four four offices need to need to work in within their own profession, healthcare. Um, as I said, it's virtually impossible for me to manage or supervise those roles over there because I'm not in that industry. I don't know anything about to put a band-aid on, let's be honest. Okay. So it's not it's not my profession. Um and I don't see the county administrator as being the person that potentially would supervise a healthcare administrator, but the healthcare administrator would answer to this body. Mm -hmm. Or to the full time chair, or however that um, structure. We can talk up. later, but I, I believe we should try having those health agencies make sure they each have a manager or director, and that they get used to reporting to us on just how things are going, type of thing, and wait on uh, overall health administrator till we. Till we work on the general administration. That's my thought. But I don't sit where you sit, and I can tell that this is really important to you. You you you've mentioned it, and you keep mentioning it. So you're seeing something. I I'm trying to well, understand. If we're going to cut back the health department administrator, uh, director, administrator, whatever that title becomes, if that person is only over uh, health department issues. Then I think the position needs to be reclassified because if the last two people that were in that role were the health department and a RHC manager, and that position, then if it's not going to be managing the RHC, um, is a lesser position than what it has been in the last two uh, uh, people that filled that role. I think that's correct, yeah, because it, it should have it, it, at one point it was also being filled by a nurse. <laughs> so, yeah. It's been a, a interesting thing to see evolve, but I, I really feel with the things that I've read about the duties that need to lie within public health needs to be someone with those public health administrative qualifications, but they, they need to stay over public health and public health modernization. And the RHC needs managed by the RHC manager and home health hospice needs their management team. But you're really dealing with, you know, there's places where they intersect, but they really have very distinct things that they, it was never, it never worked well having someone that was told to dictate over both because you already had a manager. So what was that person going to manage when the manager already knew the job and you always were bringing in a new person that it, the manager didn't need someone else over them, and it became a a complicated I, I agree. problem. I agree. That's what I saw. Because we didn't just keep them in their public health lane, trying to do that administrator role for public health, and that those are what I feel was mistakes of the past that we're trying, and that's why we hadn't gone out for that hire. You know, when we came on, we had that gap in in that role. We put in those intern gals, but a lot of it came back to a larger administrative conversation, which is what we're trying to, you know, <laughs> deal with, because I, I think it comes back to having someone with administrative credentials be able to serve and, and help those department heads 
with what is still said. I know we promised to keep it to an hour. Um, I have two websites uh, that I was going to share. Um, this was something that somebody had sent me that I had had some discussions with this particular role about. I'll, I'll forward you the website so you can also review them outside of this meeting and then we can discuss them at the next one. So one is a, an entity out of Ben. Um, They provided administrative, HR, payroll, all sorts of things. But one of their uh, things that they do advise on is strategic planning and all that, which we said, you know, with the the necessity of change, we've got to get strategic planning put in place, which I feel we had a, a functioning board of commissioners doing commissioner duties, policy, legislative. And you had a county administrator overseeing employees and you had a real strategic plan in place and had contact with professional services that I feel like we could keep on track more effectively and that they would also, in that policy realm, be able to advise us of what policies you know, that we potentially need that we may not have at this time or that we need to develop. Um, so one of them was that and then the other one And this is uh, COCI. I'm trying to find where it actually says what that is. Central Oregon Intergovernmental Council. And so um, they're the ones that could provide some potential facilitation if we felt that was necessary uh, for strategic planning or um, really fleshing out more of this administrative conversation to get it to where we felt it was. Uh, the job description that helps us perform our duties, helps our departments be able to have uh, the needs met through administrative duties. Um, and so I, I think these are things, that, you know, I'll send these links to both of you. You can look through them uh, and then we could maybe discuss it in a little more depth um, at our next meeting. Things for Okay, now. Sounds good. Sound, yeah, thank you. I'd like to look at those. And I, I mean that there's actually some some things as I look through their links that um, it might even be similar to what uh, Stan Foster said uh, discussed with you of things that they provide that would be similar to that. And so it might be some opportunities outside of even the administrative discussion of folks that we can engage with. Any points like just looking through their website, but they do work within our region. So, um, next meeting, um, I will continue to gather, and I, I know we have a few, a couple, two or three, really, um, administrator job descriptions that has been replied to through HR channels and whatnot, but I will continue to gather those. Um, when I have half a dozen or so, I'll at least scan them and send them out to you for Thank review. You. So that'd be great. Have them reviewed before our next meeting. Um, any other any other action items that we'd like to pursue? Well, is there, is there anything on the form of government that aspect that we need to be looking into before our next meeting or, or well not. there's there's nothing we can do until the legis the, the legislative fix for the revised statutes for the statutes is done. There's nothing we can do until that's removed. Do we need to get refreshed for if we didn't know before the differences of the different forms of government that have boards of commissioners, whether it's you know um uh, this and I brought this in because I wasn't but I wasn't sure I charter to charter the charter can I believe I have one please. One of the biggest things, the biggest takeaways when I look at this chart is there are so many different forms 
you know, counties have done it in so many different ways. Um, the vast majority of counties are a, a board of commissioners with um, full-time chairs, um, administrators that are appointed. The chair fills that role in a couple of counties. Um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine counties that are constitutional home rule counties. There's still a board of commission. They still have a, a chair, a board of commissioners with a chair. Um, and again, appointed administrators. In one instance, the chair is that process or that function. Um, seven county courts still in, in all of those county court systems still. Um, identifies, and I'm not sure if this is accurate, but identifies the judge as the administrator in all seven count of those counties. Uh, question, do you recall who, uh, during count your county college, you taught that section, if they did? Um, I don't, but I can look it up. I have all my... Do you think it was an AOC staffer or an external person? I don't recall. I'd have to look at those. I've got all the different sections. It's been too long since I... Yeah. So, so again, my takeaway is that that um, regardless, as a county court or a county board of commissioners, we can design it almost however we want to design it to fit our needs. Um, we move to a board board of commissioners, and whether we have a, an administrator or the chair serves as the administrator, same as the county court process we have now, or we have. And in some instances, they have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counties who don't show an administrator. Um, I don't know how they fill those functions in those seven counties, but but again, there's another option of however they're doing it that they don't have an administrator, and and that might be good to reach out to those seven and see how they're fill, fulfilling those roles, um, those functions, those duties. Which I can do. I have not I reached out that. to Wasco yet. Wasco is one that changed not that long ago. Um, they'd be another one to. Wasco shows that they changed in 2010. Okay. And Morrow County was the most recent in 2017. Right. I say not that long ago, but. I have them. <laughs> it seems recent. Um, I will reach out to those seven, at least, that don't show an administrator and see if it's accurate, whether they do have or don't have, and how they fulfill that role. Um, and we'll continue to reach out to counties and request the job descriptions for the administrators. Oh, now look, Rick is blurry. Perfect. Okay. Still making me out. Pardon me? They talked about going to five so that two of you can talk to each other without having a meeting. Well, and I just think that there's a lot of issues that this county faces that uh, more capacity could be a real benefit. And maybe find out whether uh, establishing a board of commissioners with X number of seats, is that something that is fairly easy to change later or not? You know, or is it like doing a do over if you change the number? That's another question. Another uh, difference in counties, there are, there are a total of five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six counties with five uh, commissioner seats. Clackamas, Washington, Multnomah, Lane, Hood River, Clatsop, pretty, you know, counties with decent population bases. Um, and then are the, you know, if you're gonna add two more seats, are they paid positions or are they volunteer positions? Are they, you know, yeah, two more commissioners. If you're gonna, if everybody's gonna continue to be paid, there's another, another expense. So, but but again, it highlights that there's multiple ways of structuring the building. 
I want to get my daughter to the event. All right, so uh, did we decide when we want to do the next, have the next meeting? Um, it would have to be in March. I know we're meeting the first Monday in March. That won't work that evening. No. Um, March 13th, potentially. Evening meeting again. Who did that then? I could do it. March thirteenth. Yeah. I usually have that one too. All right, so this is the uh, county court work section. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.